Uh, need a video, don't know if it's worth it. Uh, it depends if you like the switches in the G Pro Wireless and the G Pro Superlight. I found that they were okay, but there is a big difference. Actually, let me let me compare them, I have two. White is default, and then black is with the KL GM2s. Custom sounds amazing. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. What about the feel though? It feels so much better. It's like a night and day difference when it comes to feel. It sounds like they were lubed. Uh, they don't feel smoother per se, but they just feel like they're more locked in. They feel like more snappy, you know? So yep, a pretty noticeable difference here. And today we're going to take a look at how you can do the exact same thing. The process here is pretty straightforward if you know how to use a soldering iron. And even if you don't, this is a pretty easy starting point. And it's definitely worth it in my opinion, depending on which mouse you're using. Especially if you're using a G Pro Wireless or a G Pro Superlight, the upgrade is pretty noticeable. And then just like keyboard switches, you've got a ton of different options here that range in different sounds and feels and the characteristics of the switch itself. I'm currently using the KLGM2 Teal in my G Pro Superlight, which is my main mouse. And there is just no way that I can go back to the stock Omron 20Ms that were in there before. So let's take a look at what you need to know. Now, the benefits of upgrading the mouse switches are basically just around improving the feel and feedback, similar to how you have different switch options for your mechanical keyboard. If better feel leads to better aim for you or more confidence in gaming, then more power to you. But for me, this is just 100% having a better feeling, better sounding and more solid mouse. And I'm not kidding when I say that the difference really is night and day. In the case of the G Pro Wireless and other Logitech mice which have Omron switches, you'll also be avoiding the dreaded double clicking fault that these switches are very prone to. So a nice little upgrade here will mean that you'll never have to encounter that. Now to access the switches on pretty much any gaming mouse out there, you will need to open up the mouse, which involves removing the stock pads and potentially making them impossible to reuse. So it's essential here to get your hands on some aftermarket pads like core pads, if you haven't already. That way you've got a nice little upgrade to your glides as well, which you should probably be doing anyway. In terms of mouse disassembly, it's going to be different for every mouse out there, of course. Generally, there are a few screws hidden underneath the pads, and then you'll be able to remove the shell, any cables, and any additional screws that hold the button triggers. In the case of the G Pro Superlight, it is actually a pretty complex teardown, and there is a lot going on here. The main mouse buttons and scroll wheel are actually on a separate PCB, but this actually makes it a lot easier to work with. So here are the stock Omron 20Ms, not horrible by any any means, but we can definitely get an easy upgrade installed here. You'll also want to pull out the scroll wheel here as well, just so we can work around those switches a bit easier. Now comes the fun part though, and that's removing the solder. And here I'm just going to do it the cheap way with a hand pump. That involves heating the solder joint up and then just vacuuming it up with the pump. Of course, a complete rework station would be the dream here, so feel free to use better tools if you have those available. But if you're using something really cheap like I am here too, that can work absolutely fine. So with all of that solder removed, we can finally get those stock Omron 20M switches out of here and drop in whatever you're upgrading to. In this case, I'm installing the KLGM 8s. A quick little tip here is to solder only the middle pin first and focus on getting the switch fully seated onto the PCB. Then you can go ahead and solder the other two pins. Honestly, it's a pretty easy swap if you're familiar with soldering and desoldering. Shouldn't really take you more than 10 minutes if you've done something like this before. Even if you've never soldered before, this wouldn't be a bad place to learn. Just make sure that you look up some tutorials beforehand and have a small enough soldering iron to work with for those small pins. If you don't have any of these tools on hand and you've never soldered before in your life, then I'll leave a link to some tools down below. This is definitely one of those skills that is always nice to have on hand. But let's talk about what your switch options are here. The most recommended switch upgrade will be a KLGM switch, either a 2.0, 4.0 or 8.0, depending on how much switch lifespan you'd like. But more importantly, the snappiness and sound of the switch that you'd prefer as well. The differences here are pretty noticeable, 
with the 4.0 having the snappiest and stiffest feel out of the three, the 2.0 being the lightest but still offering a really satisfying click, and the 8.0s being about in the middle. Personally, I'm using the 2s in the G Pro Superlight because I really like the full click that they provide, but I did try the 8s for a few days. They were just a little bit too snappy and loud for my preference, so I went back to the GM2s. And this leads me to a very important note, and that's that the same switch installed across a range of different mice will actually feel and sound very different as well. So for example, the KLGM8s, which are kind of the flagship KLGM switch at the moment, I found them just a little bit too harsh and snappy in the G Pro Superlight, but the same switch installed in the ExtraFi ZM1, which is Rocket Jump Ninja's new mouse, uh, somehow feel so much better and well-tuned. They kind of have a much better, fuller sounding click. So most of that comes down to how the switch is positioned inside the mouse and the structures around it. But if that wasn't enough, it's also possible to find variations between the same switch installed into the same mouse. So just like keyboard switches, it is very possible to find a variance across the same switch model. So this is why I'd recommend if you're interested in buying a specific switch, definitely buy more than a couple, buy at least four. So that way you can sort out the best two. That way you've got at least two switches that sound and feel pretty close. You also have several options here from Huano, which are these switches found in all Zowie gaming mice. And if you're already rocking a Zowie, there's probably no need to upgrade here because these feel super, super nice. There are a ton more options here than the these three shown, but the most commonly used in Zowie mice are the blue dot and the red dots. Then we have the TTC Golds, which are probably the most unique switch in this lineup because they have the shortest travel distance and by far the lightest feel at around 0.5 newtons. These actually feel and sound pretty similar to the stock Omron 20Ms found in the Superlight, but just a bit more locked in. If I had to order them from lightest to heaviest, it would probably look something like this, but I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, a few of these switches feel very similar to each other, with the new answers being very hard to pick up, like the KLGM 8s versus the Huano Blue Dots, very similar actuation force and overall feel, but the KLs have a bit more of a snappy actuation. Even the differences between the three Huano switches themselves are very small to me anyway, that's why I have them all lined up here back to back. Then as for the sound, here's what you can expect ordered from lightest to hardest. So I feel like the ordering here from lightest to heaviest is pretty spot on, at least to me anyway, with the sweet spot for most people going to be somewhere in the middle. For some reason, I see the KLGM 4s as a really popular upgrade option, but this feels by far the heaviest switch in the entire lineup. And having that much weight behind the trigger in game honestly just feels a bit too weird for me personally. My favorite switches here would have to be the KLGM 2s and the Huano Blue White Dots. They both offer a light to moderate actuation, great feedback, and a nice full sounding click. I also think that these two sounded the best and fullest when installed in the G Pro Superlight, which tends to feel a little bit too empty and hollow for some of these switches. And the bottom line here is that they are a noticeable upgrade over the stock Omron 20Ms. In fact, all of these switches are. I've also measured no significant difference in click latency between them, since that's mostly a result of polling rate and debounce time, which is controlled by the mouse firmware. This is the result that we'd expect. So really a pretty quick, cheap and effective mod, which seems most useful for mice like the G Pro Y, and the G Pro Superlight, where the stock Omrons either just fail on you by double clicking or they just don't offer much feedback in the case of the Omron 20Ms. Uh, I'll also mention that this is a pretty easy place to start uh, to learn soldering, in my opinion, if you have a fine enough soldering tip. It really is a pretty straightforward process. The switches themselves are only really a couple dollars each as well, so not a whole lot of money invested here either. Again, all of the tools that you'll need will be linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.